Hey everyone, Matt from Crank Engineering, and I've got Marco's Triumph Chopper here in the shop. Got a quite a bit of work to do on it, but one of the first jobs is to fit up this DNA Attitude, whatever brand it is, Springer. So I'll have to do a bit of work with the bearings to get it to fit, and I'll do a video on bearings coming up, but before we talk about bearings, I thought we might do a quick video on tolerances. Okay, so tolerancing is all about getting parts to fit together and when it comes to mass production, it's important so that we can manufacture equipment that you can buy at an economical price. So just quickly for the exercise today, here's a, a brass bush that I've machined for some purpose, I can't remember what, it was sitting in the scrap bin and here's three pieces of just steel bar. So clearly the fit of this steel bar in this brass bush is very loose so there's a lot of clearance there this particular one's quite a bit bigger but it fits a lot more smooth but i can still wiggle the bush so there's a bit of clearance there and this particular piece of bar doesn't fit so we've got a mismatch there so that's relevant because i'm going to start talking about um, types of fits and what they mean when it comes to our motorcycles. So here's a representation of a hole in a part. So it's a cross-sectional cross drawing through a part like this. So this is the hole. And this represents our shaft um, that we're trying to fit into this hole. Now in this particular case, we've got a gap between the hole and the part. So there's a gap there. So this is what's called a clearance fit. Pretty self-explanatory. In this particular case, we've almost got no difference in the diameter of the shaft compared to the diameter of the hole. And this is called a transition fit. If our hole stays the same size, but our shaft is allowed to grow, then what we get is what's called an interference fit because the shaft is bigger than the hole. So of course the hole can also vary in size. It could be this size here or it could be this size here and if that's what the allowable difference is then this thing here is called the tolerance. And this variation can apply to both the hole and to the shaft. So just to give you another visual representation of what this looks like, here's my hole through the center and here's three pieces of shaft that have been installed into this hole. So in this case, you can see that the shaft has a gap in here. So there is clearance between this shaft and this hole. Even if the shaft size is allowed to vary by this amount here, the black amount, it's still got clearance between the shaft and where the hole can be allowed to vary in here. So that's going to always be a clearance fit even if the shaft size changes and even if the hole size changes. If we get a little bit more careful with our sizes, if the hole size stays the same, and it can vary in this range here. But if my shaft starts to vary in size up to this size, then you can see we're gonna have some interference between the shaft and the hole itself. Again, if we keep the hole size the same, if I make the shaft quite a bit bigger, then it's always going to have an interference fit with the hole. So even if the shaft varies this amount here, it's still quite a bit bigger than what the hole will allow. So if I just take these bands and put them on a separate diagram, we get something called, um, well this is a table of fits, and I'll show you a, a commercial version in a second, but really if my hole stays the same size, so here's my hole, so here's my hole tolerance, every time it stays the same, and this is what's called the hole basis, but if I let my shaft get bigger, so the shaft tolerance is here, gives me a clearance fit, if I let the shaft get to this size, then I'm going to have some sort of interference here. And that's gonna be a transition fit. And if I let the shaft get way bigger, 
then I'm going to have an interference. So here's a commercial version of one of these tables. I scraped this straight off Wikipedia so you can find it as well. And it's also pretty um, obvious. This is my favorite uh, workshop handbook and it's my number one book on my uh, book list which I'll link to in the text below. But here's a, a version in the same book here. So these are all commercially available now. You can get them in handbooks or you can get them straight off the web. But for example, if I wanted to determine um, a, a transition fit on a 25 millimeter hole, I'll show you how I read this table. So uh, my this is a hole holes here, shafts here. So these are the shaft sizes and these are the hole sizes. So above and up to and including between 18 and 25, a 30, so my 25 mil hole fits in the middle of here. So I need to use this band of the table. And if I've decided I want a transition fit, now if I'm gonna fit a steering head bearing to the stem, I don't want it to be loose and I don't wanna to have to hammer it on. So I'm going to pick, for example, um, this particular fit here. So the capital letters designate the hole sizes and the small letters designate the shaft sizes. So. It's a H7 hole and a H6 shaft. So if I go down the table and I look for the intersection here between these uh, fits and this size, then hopefully you can read this on the camera, but this says that my H7 hole is between zero and 25 microns on the plus side and my shaft, my H6 shaft, is on the positive side between zero and 16 microns above the nominal size. So what does that actually mean? So if I've got a nominal 25 millimeter hole and I want to achieve a H7 slash H6 fit between the hole and the shaft, that table told me I could be between zero and 25 microns or 25 thousandths of a millimeter above the nominal size and the shaft could be between zero and 16 microns or 16 thousandths of a millimeter above the nominal size. So if I was actually gonna write these on the drawing or try to machine to them, I'll be boring the hole to 25 nominal size, zero to 25 microns above that size, and I'll be machining the shaft to 25 millimeters and I'll be aiming to get the shaft between zero and 16 microns above 25. So this tells me the range that I'm allowed to machine to, to achieve this specific fit. So that's just a quick lesson, hopefully useful, uh, just something to put in the memory banks and think about if you end up getting into a bit of machining and you want to make parts specifically for your motorcycle project. Thanks for watching.